<laughs> I left my pants on the bus. No, it's welcome back to Let's Play Inazuma 11.3. In the last video, we did nothing, but we got Riku Matsushita, also known as Pants. And in this episode, we're going to travel. There's definitely not going to be any story progress in this one. We're going to Fukuoka in Japan to train up our new player and collect items and pretty much finish off any extra competition routes we were doing. We have to get on a plane just for the purposes of visiting a tiny village in Japan, but that sounds like a reasonable quest objective to me. So obviously this was the place from the previous game, which had a very awkward name to pronounce in the English language. But here, Pants will make her first contribution to the team by using Sigma Zone, which belongs to Genesis, by the way. <laughs> it's wiped out her TP in one go because she's only level 25 at the moment. I get the feeling she'll be one of those players who levels up quite slowly as well. But anyway, this episode can't be all about Pants, can it? No, we're of course exploring the lovely village of Fukuoka, where we've got the big fan. And people who've sunk a sizable amount of time into Inazuma 11-2 will know that big fan is a move that annoys everybody who got that far into it, because Darren Lachance, you'd think that like Mugen the Hand would be the last move he ever gets, but he actually has a fourth move he can learn when he's ridiculously high leveled. Oh, you can buy Emperor Penguin number two, Rip Samford, you're even less useful now. Three-legged Rush is surprisingly strong. But, um, yeah. So for most of the games and all of its post-game as well, you'd play with Darren Lachance in goal, but he'd just never level up. And he'd never get that new move. But when he reaches a level somewhere, I swear it's in like the 60s or 70s, he finally gets his last move. And it's just Big Fan, a dribbling move, which a goalkeeper does not need at all. It was the biggest anti-climax I've ever experienced in Inazuma 11. They've cut out half of Foshaw's city, unfortunately, so we can't go to the old park. But I still need to make sure I'm talking to all the NPCs because, of course, there is going to be an extra competition route match to complete here. I saw that faint bit of blue. I remember that treasure chest from the last Inazuma 11 game. You can't catch me off guard with that again. But first, apparently I'm leaving this in. Look, you can skip move animations and it makes the shot slightly more inaccurate, but it's still not going to miss the goal because why would it? <laughs> I will obviously skip move animations when I can. Not in like, impo it, if it was an option in story required matches, then I wouldn't choose to skip animations. But in a random encounter, yes, I'm going to because I'm just trying to get to this chest chest, which had some money in it, which I really needed, because I want to buy the sweet shop key, and I I spent so much money healing my players in the American camp in the last episode, because I just tried and tried to find these internationalists in an area which they're not even supposed to appear in. I don't know if I got a glitch or what, because they never appeared more than once. Well, I managed to find pants twice pretty quickly in the central Leocot area. But anyway, so we've got double the chance, so definitely keeping him on the bench for this one. Um, yeah, get off. We, we need Mark up there. We we can't be having uh, two Darren the chances on the field. Obviously, I'm not showing this. I will just go until the first goal to show that after all this time, after unlocking the American camp, we can finally take on Foshaw and almost complete the extra competition route which takes you all around the world. I really outlevel these guys, I'm no I've no doubt. Especially after that pointless grinding I did in the last episode. But let's do let's fire up 
so that I don't just have to use Fire Tornado. And, uh, yeah, I, I was about to say, presumably this will score, so I won't even show it. But then again, it is Darren Lachance. It's the best goalkeeper in the area, apart from Mark Evans. But his moves are grass type, so they're not going to stop it. So, yeah, that was me beating Foshaw, but that's not the end of the exploration. Far from it, actually. Oh, I'm going to cut in, actually, because this is my first chance to show off the TP, uh, the special tactic Crescent Moon, which I unlocked alongside Emperor Penguin X. And whoa! Have you seen what this has done? It's given me a straight shot with the goal and it's brought the entire team up with me. Oh my! Yeah, you can only get Crescent Moon if you connect to Wi-Fi and then buy the club room key and find it in a chest with Emperor Penguin Cross. But man, is that good? Oh boy! <laughs> goal. Oh hey, now that I've got Sean Frost back on the team, I can finally use Wyvern Blizzard on Kevin Dragonfly. He's equally strong as Dragon Slayer. That move was in Inazuma 11 too as well, but you never got to see it because Kevin got kicked off the team halfway through the game. While he was too low leveled to unlock the move while he was actually on the story required team. So, but but there you go, that's Wyvern Blizzard, and yes, I now realise I'm wearing the wrong kit. I changed it for the sakes of the Street Pass function two episodes ago, but I didn't realise it would also change my kit for the real team on the story. I do want to go back to Inazuma Japan's kit, because it looks really nice, and I want to keep things canonical, you know? But that's going to be half-time, I guess. I've showed quite a lot of this Fukuoka match surprisingly, <laughs> but but that's it. Sorry, Foshaw, I'm going to S-rank you. This match was weirdly tough to S-rank. I only did it 5-0. It wasn't even because of Darren, either. He, he let in every shot I took against him. It just took quite a lot of effort to get to the goal, and they took two shots on me. But regardless, we did S-rank Foshaw, doesn't inspire me with confidence for the rest of the things I'm trying to do here because there's a deep cave in Fuji Forest containing some players and I forgot I still need to S-rank both of those matches but clearly I should level up a little more before I try to do that but we are still going to go to Fuji Forest because we just unlocked it and that's right, I did quite a lot of editing Last time we were in Fuji Forest, in the last Let's Play, I included a full map to help people get around Fuji Forest. Because it is a mandatory maze, and it's tough to complete as well. Definitely something that people would need help with. But here, it has indeed been included in full, but only in Team Ogre attacks, not in Bomb Blast or Lightning Bolt. Now, you could go up or to the left to do the part that you're required to do in the main story of Inazuma 11-2, but there's nothing to be found there other than treasure chests, not even the shopkeepers who used to be there. This time, I'm going to show you the quickest way to get to the place where you find prominence in Inazuma 2 without bothering with any optional treasure chests. I simply want to get there. Follow my instructions and you will. But not included in those instructions was get the ball caught by Utagutsina's catch. Oh no, I let that happen. Here I am saying I'm going to find the quickest way to the part where you find prominence. And I'm getting troubled by a random encounter which stopped my shot with Utagutsina's catch. The funniest save in the whole game. Uh. <laughs> Carrying on from that silliness, you just want to continuously head up. I'm not bothering with don't lose possession 
random encounters right now. I simply want to make it to the end. This, this intersection, you must carry on going to the right, straight on. And that's something I can remember with my own memory. And this curve annoys me as well because it's unnecessarily wrong, long and you almost always get a random encounter on it. But I guess I got lucky on this occasion. Um, so ne next up, this is one of the troublesome parts. You want to go right and then you can turn right again at the next option to go to a treasure chest. But to actually progress, you keep going down and then you go right. That would definitely stump me if I do not if I did not have a map. Just a pity I can't use my actual map that I made for my Inazuma 2 LP, because the prominence episode of the LP is one of the most video, most viewed videos on my whole channel. But I, um, if I were to watch a YouTube video while recording, then I can't have Inazuma 11 3 full screen, and therefore I can't screen grab it. Head straight up. This one's just overkill. I think I saw a treasure chest in the glimpse of my eye, but I'm ignoring it. You just keep heading north. Boy, do I love the Fuji Forest music, but boy, would I not come here if I didn't have to. But the last match of the extra competition route will be found here. And who could it be? Could it be the Forest team? That's the guy who warps you back to the beginning. I had to be very careful when talking to him. It is... Kirkwood Junior High. That's right. It's not Prominence. It's not Diamond... Wait. Wait. Um... Okay. So I guess you can fight Prominence here. <laughs> I didn't realise they're both here. Well, the one I came for was Kirkwood Junior High. So, okay. Maybe Prominence and Diamond Dust deserve their own videos where I actually complete the match. But for now, I only came here for Kirkwood. So, that's what I'm going to do. The Forest team are not in this game, so you can't play against them here. But, <laughs> let's go Kirkwood. <laughs> I'm going to use Chaos Break in the area where Torch and Gazelle are currently located. But it's not going to include them. It's just going to be Crossfire mixed in. That actually works really well. I just did Chaos Break with the Fiery Striker Axel and the Frozen... The, the, I called him a Defender, didn't I? I did it with the Fiery Striker Axel and the Frosty Defender Sean. That was actually the closest we could get to the canonical Chaos Break, apart from using a Torch and Gazelle. That was good. Okay, that was laughably easy, but I get the feeling this match wasn't really supposed to be there, because Fuji Forest is exclusive to Team Ogre Attacks. It's not in Lightning Bolt or Bomb Blast. And it didn't make sense to take on all the Inazuma 2 teams, finishing off with Foshaw. And then we just have to take on Kirkwood, who are much easier than Foshaw. But I guess that this is possibly Team Ogre Attacks exclusive. <sighs> did, that, did that last sequence really have to happen? I was trying to do my... my uh, basically commentate the last 10 seconds of that match and I was forced to take another shot. But we completed that extra competition route and our reward is the laboratory key, which gives us another huge thing we can do. We can now go to the Alias Academy laboratory, which was supposed to have exploded. But it's actually in this game. But this episode has enough content, and to be honest, why just do the Alias HQ when these two friendly faces are knocking around? Next episode, we'll take them on. See you then.